Live in Western Oregon, this is NBC 16 News at 5.30. The coronavirus pandemic has led to big changes at county jails around Oregon with far fewer inmates living behind bars. Good evening and thanks for joining us for NBC 16 at 5.30. I'm Alan Matthews. NBC 16's Tom Adams joins us in the studio with details on what changes have happened at the Springfield and Lane County jails. So Tom, what exactly can you tell us about the situations there? Well, Alan, first, the State Sheriff's Association reports those average daily inmate counts have dropped in county jails all across Oregon. That average loss since the pandemic settled in is 45% fewer inmates. So we wanted to find out today how the Lane County and Springfield City jails are doing. Many jails across the state have reduced the number of inmates in their facilities. Lane County Sheriff Cliff Harold says pre-pandemic, the county jail was holding very close to its rated capacity. Since the middle of March, those numbers have dropped. Roughly a 35 to 40 percent reduction of our capacity from our 382 funded beds. Um, and that's about where we're sitting this morning. Right now, it's 257 inmates in the county jail. One reason for the drop is fewer offenders are being arrested and sent to jail. It's our partner agencies within the county who have been being very judicious about who really needs to come to jail after an arrest or who might be able to be cited and released. Harold adds in some cases vulnerable people have been released when possible. Alternative sentencing programs also account for part of that drop. Across the freeway in Springfield at the municipal jail, incarcerations there are down 60 percent. Anybody coming into the jail, no matter if you're an employee and or a uh, potential inmate, you're being screened medically. Rappé says before the pandemic, the Springfield Jail had a daily average of roughly 50 inmates. Now it's down to 20. Inmates have been cleared out of all dorm living spaces. And put everybody in individual cells, uh, which here we can afford to do that. And so far, no inmates have tested positive for the coronavirus in any county jail. Sheriff Harold can only hope that good fortune will not run out. Sheriff Harold adds they've done testing of four inmates in the Lane County Jail for suspected coronavirus. One test result is negative. The results on the other three cases are pending. Alan. All right, thanks a lot, Tom. Well, the ACLU is demanding information from Governor Kate Brown, the Department of Corrections, and the Trump administration about their knowledge of potential outbreaks of COVID-19 in prisons and jails. They filed a public records request after a report showed as many as 200,000 people nationwide could die if states and the federal government fail to release inmates and prisoners to slow the spread of the virus. Governor Brown so far has refused to order a large-scale release of inmates. The ACLU wants to find out if she ignored the magnitude of risk. Well, today marks the sixth day without any new coronavirus cases in Lane County. Officials say this is a big step toward recovery. If this continues through the start of May, health officials say we would be at an official marker for zero new cases. That's an important goal needed to help flatten the curve here. Lane County spokesperson Jason Davis says it's important to remember that increased testing could result in more known cases. Hopefully, though, what we do keep is that the numbers of those severe cases at our local hospital, hospitals are kept at a reasonable rate or non-existent. Here, just anyone with mild symptoms who couldn't get tested before ask for one now. Besides private practices, there are many places locally where you can get one for free. This includes McKenzie Willamette and Peace Health Hospitals. Now take a look at the coronavirus cases across the state. Despite adding another 61 cases and two new deaths, making that more than 2,300 cases and 101 deaths, only 569 people are hospitalized. The state is also looking good on its numbers for overall hospital capacity. Numbers in our region have remained about the same for the most part. Benton County remains at 29 cases. Lynn County added another case, making their total 82. Here in Lane County, as we mentioned, we remain at 50 cases with no one hospitalized. Deschutes County stands at 75 cases. Douglas County stands at 23 for the 13th day in a row. 15 people have recovered there. Coos County remains at 15 cases.
On the coast, the mayor of Coos Bay, Joe Benetti, estimates the city will start phase one of reopening between the middle and end of May. The Coos County Commissioner signed a joint Southwestern County letter to the governor asking her to allow the counties to initiate phase one of reopening. Benetti says that they'll be following the phased guidelines for reopening set by the state. His biggest concern is for those living in Coos County to follow protocols then and when opening. If we can get people to wear a mask and do social distancing and do the proper things, I think opening, uh, you know, in, in increments is all right. If people don't follow the protocols, he says they could close down again. But Eddie is concerned the rise of coronavirus cases in Coos County could affect the reopening. Chambers of Commerce on the Oregon coast are meeting virtually with Senators Ron Wyden and Jeff Merkley and members of the state Senate this Friday. Started by the Florence Area Chamber of Commerce, they'll be talking about what to expect economically and socially and asking questions sent in by local business owners. The executive director of the Bay Area Chamber of Commerce says coastal communities relied on tourism and restaurants with takeout and delivery options as a minor part of their business are adapting and surviving. I, I think we find that folks are rallying around their favorite restaurant and ordering takeout and picking it up and, and actually leaving tips with their purchases because they believe it's important to do. Slater says this meeting will help business owners get more information about what's significant and what's not when it comes to what they need to do. Well, with Oregon's stay-at-home order in effect, fewer people are driving on our roads. NBC 16's Alex Hassenstab has more on how this has affected numbers of car accidents and how it may affect your insurance rates. Rush hour looks different these days. According to the Oregon Department of Transportation, traffic has greatly reduced since the pandemic began. Around the state, we have seen about a 40 to 60 percent decrease in travel on our roadway. And this has led to a 60 percent drop in fatal accidents this month compared to April of last year. It's kind of what you'd expect. There's less traffic, so we would expect to see fewer fatalities and injuries on the roadway and crashes. Derek Wing, spokesperson for PEMCO Insurance, says a number of agencies are lowering rates during the pandemic. And with fewer crashes, we're seeing a lower number of claims. So that's good news. We realize that this is the right thing to do. Wing says even if you're barely driving, you're still recommended to have insurance. Be using your car at all. We recommend that you continue to have car insurance just because, number one, it's the law, and number two, anything can happen. Somebody could hit your car when it's just parked there. But Fear Seidel says with less cars on the road, another safety issue has surfaced. The big thing that's concerning us is the news from our law enforcement partners that they are seeing much higher speed. The dangers of travel are still there, and um, slow down, pay attention and especially around a work zone. Staying safe while saving money with the long road ahead in the pandemic. I'm Alex Hossenstab reporting. Carbon emissions from vehicles is a big contributor to climate change, and researchers are looking for other options to replace gasoline with a more environmentally friendly fuel. NBC 16's Kelsey Christensen tells us about an international team, including staff at Oregon State University, that just made a key breakthrough in finding an alternative. Filling up at the pump. On average, the United States uses nearly 390 million gallons of gasoline every day, according to the Energy Information Administration. But many researchers say it's time for an alternative fuel source. Why? To lower carbon emissions. Giliago Schiano is a researcher who was just brought on to Oregon State University. He and his international team are hopeful to find a replacement to gasoline. Some might say going green at the pump. And just this week, they published a key breakthrough. You know, the gain that we can get from this method would be huge. They've developed a new metal organic framework that can separate biobutanol from biomass. He says this is important because biobutanol is the most closely related biofuel to gasoline. So we are talking about, you know, very, very similar energy densities. The added bonus, he says the new fuel could cut vehicle carbon emissions by 33%. But there's still a lot of research to be done before it can be an option at the pump. We have to come up with engineering, um, with um, an engineering technology on how we can integrate these materials in, um, in our cars. 
The next step is looking for industry partners to further research the material and make it cost comparative to gasoline prices. Reporting in Eugene, I'm Kelsey Christensen. Make sure to sign up for our newsletter to get the latest updates on local stories in your inbox. Simply sign up by visiting NBC16.com forward slash sign dash up. Type in your email and click sign up.